Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being with me today. Um, so this talk, uh, for this talk, and this is a talk that I've been wanting to, uh, to give for a very, very long time, actually. Um, but yeah, I will be talking to you about uh, emergent narrative through uh, characters and, and systems. Um, so the idea is that, and you, you know it, uh, games have the amazing power to, to create engaging and unique emergent stories uh, through characters and events uh, driven by systems. And uh, the purpose of this talk is to try to understand um, emergent narrative a little bit better, but also propose for me to propose you a framework, a framework, a design framework that you that you can use uh, in your project to um, to help you generate emergent um, narrative. But it's uh, it's hard to do uh, a talk without uh, a talk about a narrative without actually telling you a story. And I selected you one from uh, from. One of my very favorite uh, games, uh, Crusader Kings 2 uh, from, from Paradox. Um, this is, this is the, the story of a, of a player uh, who narrates his, uh, his, um, his story to, uh, to, uh, to, to people on, on forums, uh, basically saying that he is the emperor of uh, Byzantium and uh, that emperor just dies a day after his son was born, just a day after. Um, and uh, he had been expecting to play as his uh, nephew who had distant decent uh, statistics, a good marriage, and everything. But in Crusader Kings, you, you don't choose your character. Uh, you control the hair of uh, the character who just died. And uh, this person is now playing as a just-born emperor of Byzantium. Uh, almost immediately after um, that the old emperor was, was, uh, uh, was dead, uh, the, the Shia Caliph declared a jihad on um, the empire. And in the next couple of years, uh, there was an epic battle with this, uh, with this, um, uh, with this character. And after some, some years, that, uh, that, um, that newborn empire finally wins. And as a result, the three-year-old character is now known as the Hammer. Uh, somehow, I doubt he had uh, any personal involvement to justify that, that title. So imagine a three-year-old character, Emperor, nicknamed the hammer and this is really the this is a unique story uh, that happened just for this one character and this is really the power of emergent narrative uh, these interesting stories that uh, games can can offer and uh, this is personally what i love to experience uh, what i love to play and what i love to create as well um, so now i want to to, to to take a little bit of time to uh, to define uh, what exactly is uh, emergent narrative? I won't too go too, too, too much in, into details about, about this, but I still want to, to, to define what it is exactly. Um, because <clears throat> we have a, a good understanding of what is emergent gameplay. Um, so it's, it's really about um, players using the tools, um, players are in, using the different tools and combine them together uh, to, uh, to solve challenges in a way that feels creative and unique to their gameplay. The answer is, is less straightforward about emergent narrative. Um, creators, players, and journalists can agree when, when it happens, but not necessarily how. And so, um, so just I, I want to, uh, to, to define a little bit um, the four types of narrative from video games. This is an, an excerpt from, from a great uh, article published by Henry Jenkins, Game Design as Narrative Architecture. architecture sorry. Um, but uh, basically, he defines uh, these four, uh, four types of, of narratives as, as the first one with, with uh, being enacting stories. So the idea is that the player acts in the game and uh, he or she reveals the story as they play the game. Uh, evocative spaces, so really the, the idea that uh, the, pl the place that the players are, are playing in um, makes them remember about something. So this is really the case about uh, famous video, video game franchises, for example. If you're playing a Star Wars game, you don't start from nothing. You already know about the Star Wars universe before actually playing the game. And um, the game is, is really making you remember about what you already know. And so uh, evocative spaces is really playing with, um, with the idea that you remember things uh, that are already part of your imagination. The third component is uh, embedded narrative. So here the idea is that um, the narrative is, is, is hidden and the player is, is really 
um, is really trying to deduct all of the all of the narrative piece, uh, narrative pieces that are missing from from the gameplay into uh, into something that is coherent in their in their mind. So this is really about deducting and reconstructing reconstructing what is what is missing. And the last, uh, the fourth, um, the fourth. Uh, 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 a narrative type for, for video games is about emergent narrative. So you, uh, so you probably uh, get, guessed it. This is the purpose of, of this talk. Um, but the idea about emergent narrative is is here. The player is here to uh, to to influence the the game systems. There is no complete control over the the game uh, systems and the game events that are going to define what the story is for for the gameplay. And uh, here, the indirect um, uh, interaction with the game systems and, and events is what what is uh, about what it is about emergent uh, emergent narrative and they are the witness of a story that is actually taking place in gameplay. Um, so a little bit of a, a definition about emergent narrative. So it emergent narrative happens when player when the players are the witnesses and actors of an event or series of events um, generated from a combination of systems creating a sense of story that feels unique and personal to their gameplay. So this is, this is an important definition, and I will use uh, all of these concepts and go a little bit deeper about what it means uh, exactly and how you can use it in your design framework. Um, but first, uh, well, I, I told you already about, about Crusader Kings 2, but I want to, uh, to, to first identify the, the, kind of, uh, the kind of games that, uh, that include emergent narrative as their, as their main source of story in their games. Um, uh, the first one is, you guessed it, uh, Crusader Kings 2, uh, where you control a, a, a character as a, uh, being a part of a, of a dynasty, and uh, you're really in the center of, of uh, lots, of, uh, lots of conflict about uh, territory wars and, uh, and families and uh, heirs and hierarchy, etc. Um, another example uh, is the, the Sims series. So uh, here, very much so focusing about about family, about a realistic, well, semi-realistic uh, life uh, with with characters um, and everything. Uh, the Football Manager series as well. Um, this is being being a manager is very much about managing people. Of course, uh, this is this is uh, this is uh, uh, evident. But um, this is this is also like what what. The, 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 what the story is for for these games, and it's uh, actually pretty interesting that sports uh, rely on emergence for um, their gameplay. Um, then you have uh, RimWorld, so here uh, a sci-fi colony uh, simulation, uh, XCOM series where you are uh, the captain and the commander. Sorry about uh, about the crew of Marines um, defending against uh, against aliens. And to a lesser extent, uh, Shadow of uh, Mordor, Shadow of War, um, the emergent narrative is, is, not, uh, is not very present in AAA, uh, in AAA space, actually. And uh, Shadow of Mordor, through, um, through their Nemesis system, uh, actually went into that, into that direction uh, recently with, with their two games, uh, Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War, very much centered around a hierarchy of orcs that you have to, to take over and, that you, uh, and that, you can, uh, that you can use in your gameplay too. Um, to uh, to conquer uh, and to uh, and to save the world basic, basically um, and so uh, what's interesting about about uh, all of these uh, all of these games uh, here it, this list Crusader the Kings the Sims this this list that you see right here makes no sense it makes no uh, no sense at all uh, the the games here have they are comp completely different genres uh, they speak to a completely different audience. Uh, between Football Manager and Crusader Kings, uh, your audience is probably very, very different. I personally love uh, all of the, all of these games, um, but the target audience is is extremely different for for all of these games. And so, I want to uh, to first uh, list a little bit the similar the similarities that that they have all together. Um, first, they are they generate interesting generated stories, and um, I was uh, I was uh, look, uh, watching the the, the postmortem of, of RimWorld and the creative director was really telling um, telling uh, his team that they are not working on a game they are working on a story generator a story simulation and uh, this is this is important and this is the, the core of of what emergent narrative is really about 
they are systems heavy. Um, they are also a characters driven uh, experience. Um, you can have an uh, emergent narrative without characters, uh, I guess, uh, but there are no, not so many examples um, right now. And uh, actually, it's uh, probably a challenge for, for you to, uh, to generate this uh, without characters. But um, yeah, uh, all of these experiences really rely on characters to, uh, to create stories. Uh, you have also many characters. Uh, it's not about one or few people. It's usually about many NPCs. Um, and characters have also statistics and or traits that uh, define their, their identity and their personality. And there's always elements of, of uh, uncertainty and, uh, and chaos about uh, all of these games. Um, and also, they, they include uh, elements of, of uh, simulation. Um, so now it's a, it's a, it's a pretty uh, good, good list um, uh, to, to, to start with. And now I want to, uh, to start uh, listing uh, concretely what, what elements um, your game design needs to, needs to deliver uh, to, uh, to create emergent narrative. So uh, this list is, is not exhaustive, uh, but constitutes a, a very good base uh, for your design framework and uh, concepts. So, the first game design is, is uh, the first game design pattern is about uh, generated stories. You, so you cannot have emergence uh, without intersections of, of systems and uh, events. So, the combination the combination part um, is what creates uh, emergent gameplay. You uh, you combine different tools together to solve issues. Here with emergent narrative, it's the same concept. It's about the combination of systems and events that generate a story. Uh, and then this series of, of events create a, a logical, or sometimes not logical, storyline. But this is that, that storyline is really building up in the mind of the player and uh, to, a, to a story that, that they can remember. Uh, and then also, um, these stories are unique to players. They're, they can have similarities between, between, uh, between some, some playthroughs, but mostly uh, the generated stories feel unique to players. And when they, when they talk about their game, what, when they talk about uh, what they've experienced, it's really something that only happened to them. And this is really uh, powerful as an experience. Um, so the notion of, of identity. Uh, in uh, in the gameplay and uh, and for characters in uh, in uh, in these games is is extremely important um, and uh, here really uh, it starts with, with it starts simple uh, with characters having a, having a, a name a given surname uh, a given name a surname a nickname some, sometimes uh, some uh, a nickname that they uh, sometimes earn sometimes that you you give uh, these uh, these nicknames as well um, their gameplay. Uh, Obviously, um, but this is a, this is a huge uh, vector for uh, for identity for the characters. How they play, what they can do, what they cannot do, um, their class, archetype, role, and skills. Uh, representation is uh, also extremely uh, important. Uh, so it's not only about uh, visuals, um, but uh, it's also their voice, uh, their face, how they are present. They are represented, usually in in um, in emergent uh, in emergent. Uh, Games with, with a lot of emergence, uh, representation of, of characters is a little bit tricky because there are so many. You cannot have a highly defined character uh, for, um, for hundreds and thousands of, of, of characters across, across the, uh, the game. Um, but uh, you know, if you can uh, spare representing them, just like Shadow of Mordor did, uh, this, is, uh, this is good to, uh, to have. And their backgrounds, nationality, ethnicity, uh, ethnic, ethnicity, all are. Uh, ethnicity, race. Um, I'm French, so the the is very uh, difficult for me to, to pronounce. Sorry, um, but uh, yeah, going back to to identity. So the, the title, uh, if they are part of of the nobility, uh, if they if they are religious, um, if they are in the military, their rank as well really defines who they are. Uh, their social status, so where they stand in the in the hierarchy of uh, of other people, uh, their caste. Um, the possessions that they have, um, the properties that uh, that they own, uh, the her heritage and the claims of uh, other parts of the of the of the world that they that they want to get uh, for themselves, and family is also uh, extremely important vector for uh, for identity and as a primary uh, game design pattern. 
so that was a big uh, that was a big um, pattern for for uh, for games. But this is really what what sets apart also uh, some games from from another. Uh, for example, I I played. Um, uh, Darkest Dungeon. And Darkest Dungeon is very, very similar in, in concept, in structure, in the game design uh, uh, than um, XCOM. It's really pretty, pretty similar uh, game design, but um, in XCOM they put a lot of uh, a lot of uh, effort into building a sense of identity in their characters. In Darkest Dungeon, um, these the characters are mostly pawn, and you don't really remember them. They are they have interesting events happening for them, but it's not really the the, the core concept of the game to create interesting uh, stories for characters. Um, personality, so uh, another another good vector of uh, of emergent narrative. So here, really dealing with with traits, quirks, uh, personal values. Like traits uh, for with uh, Crusader the Kings, for example, are very very funny uh, to read about as well. They are very very varied, um, and uh, <clears throat> and this is really what what uh, defines them uh, uh, what de defines them as uh, as characters. Um, the moral strengths and weaknesses that that they have, uh, how they stand to uh, uh, what uh, to the to the world that um, that they live in. Um, their objectives, their motivations, their uh, career and uh, life goals. This is something that um, that uh, uh, games do as well. Uh, you know, just um, really putting putting out to the player the fact that this character has uh, a clear objective in his life and he will do uh, choices and he will do he or she will do everything that um, they can to uh, try to make that happen. And then also their sexual orientation, um, so their gender, their political. Alignment is a vector for personality. Um, emotional connection. So, uh, for emergent for emergent stories to to happen, um, players really need to care. Um, this is this is obvious, but um, it's it's really it's really what should be your your game design goal here. You can have a deep and complex interconnection of of systems and events, but if players don't notice. Uh, there is no emergent narrative. They need to notice what's 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 happening and the depth of the stories that is uh, that is actually created. So you need to trigger an emotional response from from the player to to create emergent narrative. Uh, for example, um, renaming characters is a simple way for for, for players to uh, um, to care more about them. Um, I have uh, in in my XCOM um, sessions, for example, I used to uh, and I did it a few times. Uh, basically, the, the I would I would rename characters uh, for famous game developers in in the game, and as soon as uh, the the first Japanese character would join my my party, I would name him uh, Shigeru Miyamoto, and. Every time I did that, and I went into uh, into into war, into a, into a battle with uh, with Miyamoto-san, he would die every time, and uh, that was frustrating for me because I really wanted him to uh, to perform. But for me, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto uh, name is cursed. You know, for in in my XCOM sessions, this is this is horrible, uh, and I don't want him in my in my party because he will keep dying. And this is, you know, it's a quirky, uh, it's 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 a, it's a funny st a story. It's it, but it's mine, and I like it. And actually, I don't want to to go against it because it's just a part of me and my gameplay now, and uh, I like it. And this is also why I'm telling you this this story today. Um, discrete agency, so. Here, really dealing with with the fact that um, the player has limited control over the the environment and over the the game systems that uh, he's or she is facing. Um, really uh, uh, interacting with with characters in an indirect way, more about influencing what what's going on uh, than having a complete control over over these things. Um, and also the concept of of being a witness of a story that unfolds through uh, your actions. Uh, uncertainty. This is this is a big one, um, but really the the idea is that for one set of of parameters, there there is not one but multiple outcomes possible. Uh, here we're really dealing with elements of of chaos, of randomness. Um, that might be uh, that might be actually a little bit frustrating for 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 players if they uh, if elements of uncertainty and uh, and chaos play too big of a role in their play experience. 
Um, but if you if you really um, if you really succeed at framing these elements of, of chaos uh, to create interesting stories, players will actually buy into that kind of exper uh, that kind of experience and uncertainty, because uh, managing chaos is inherently fun to do. Uh, so, for example, in Crusader Kings, characters, including the including the player character, can die at any moment in gameplay. Uh, this was the case with, with, the, with the player story that I told you about um, earlier. Um, but here in Crusader the Kings, the statistics and, uh, uh, and uh, the statistics of the, player, the, the, of the characters actually play a small role in the simulation in the, uh, in the player experience. And just uh, knowing that you know, my players might die at any moment and that you cannot force a woman to get pregnant as well, it's... You know, she 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 sometimes can uh, can have kids, sometimes she cannot. But you cannot force it. Just as in life, life is is chaotic, and uh, this is uh, this is a great way to uh, to uh, to simulate that that uh, that certain uncertainty as well. Uh, so many heroes, um, emergent narrative is much stronger when it involves more than one character. Um, a static world that is too player centric really wounds the elements of, of narrative immersion. And um, the player is, is really here, uh, especially in Crusader Kings, uh, is one uh, character amongst many, many others. Um, and really making, making the world field feel uh, deep and interesting even beyond your own sense of, of identity and the, the, the character that you uh, control is, uh, is important. And uh, also dealing with, with characters created uh, and removed throughout gameplay. So uh, death, uh, but also um, birth, all of these concepts are, are interesting. Um, progression. This is, this is an important one about game design in, in general, uh, about uh, storytelling as well, but uh, for emergent narrative, it plays a big role as well. Uh, so anything going from uh, career advancements, promotions, um, the fact that the characters are learning new things, or they are forgetting uh, stuff as well. Uh, the fact that they, they become expert, experts in, in their field and really recognized by other characters. Um, but also age transitions. So the Sims, for example, really the, the transition between, between a child, a teenager, an adult, um, an elderly is, is, uh, is important in a story that you want to remember. Uh, legacy. So uh, really here the, the idea is, uh, is that characters, they write their own story. Um, their past to the game is, is something that, uh, that you remember and um, the fact is that you can, you can reinforce this as, as a game designer um, if, you, if you provide a tangible um, way for the players to, to, uh, to see what happened to these, uh, to these characters. Uh, so a registry of, of events and facts is helpful for them to, to remember about uh, these characters. Uh, the, the sense of, uh, of, of history with, the, with these characters and really interesting stories, family dynasties is, is, is important as well. Uh, in the MMO One Hour, One Life, for example, you are uh, the child of another player and uh, your ability to survive in that world is really dependent on um, that player's ability to, to care for you and to provide for you, otherwise you'll die. Uh, so these are the, the primary game design uh, patterns that, that you need uh, to create an emergent, um, emergent uh, narrative in your games. Uh, these are all very, uh, very important and uh, this constitutes the, the, the main game design framework uh, for your game design. Uh, now there are also other ones uh, that uh, are important and that uh, provide value to, uh, uh, to, to gameplay. Uh, and I want to, to, to go a little bit about, uh, about them. Uh, the first one is about performance. So uh, characters, they are facing challenges. And um, how they do when they, uh, when they are confronted to, to challenges, do they, do they succeed, do they fail? Uh, this is this is a this is a great uh, vector for for stories, uh, their achievements, what they what they actually achieved in the game, and the titles that they might earn and that they might have earned, um, depending on uh, how well they they performed. Uh, relationships. So, 
uh, the simulating the interactions between between the characters in in the world so without uh, any input from from you they are not interacting with you they're interacting with with each other and that creates depth but also the relationships that you have that they have with you uh, is important obviously so everything related to love friendships lies schemes and feuds between characters is extremely interesting to uh, to, to go deeper um, relationship uh, meters and reactions and uh, actions that they take when they get mad at uh, at someone else or at something in, in particular um, and again the, the registry of, of events leading to, to the current status so relationships is, is really about uh, well usually bad relationships are about a list of, of bad things that happens between between two uh, two people and when you consult all the all the bad stuff that that actually happened to to lead to uh, to that uh, horrible situation. Uh, this is also pretty pretty fun to see. Uh, sense of uh, evolving identity. Um, so here is shaped by accomplishments, uh, choices, events, and the environment. Um, so uh, very famous uh, game design pattern um, in XCOM after they are uh, getting promoted. Uh, um, several times in XCOM, the, the characters they earned they earn a nickname, and that really defines their, their identity. But it's really an identity that they earned, that evolves. Um, they they had no nickname um, when they when they began the game, but they earned it uh, because they uh, they performed well, and that identity uh, evolved for the game because that that nickname was pulled from a library of, of uh, different choices. Um, Statistics in Crusader Kings um, for infants, for example, evolve tremendously depending on the environment that they are in. So, uh, infants that are that are part of a, of a good family of of people who can provide a good education, they will grow and and uh, and um, uh, have better set statistics that uh, that in environments where um, where the the, the 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 infants are just not being taken care of, taken taken care of. Sorry. Uh, revealed identity. So um, here, um, still about the about the notion of identity. Um, here, the, the the concept is more about an information was hidden. Uh, it was um, it was a part of their of their character, but somehow um, it, they didn't uh, they didn't earn that part of identity. They uh, it just was revealed uh, to to the characters through through gameplay. So. Um, so characters, for example, uncovering their uh, their true background and ancestry for for, for characters who who don't know uh, who their parents are, um, but also characters revealing um, and discovering actually their sexual orientation uh, coming out. Um, this is uh, this is something that you that you see in the in the Sims, for example. Sexual orientation is is not is not a choice in the game. It's revealed throughout gameplay, and when uh, when infants become adults, this is something that that you discover about them without any uh, any input. And of course, yeah, any elements of, of secrecy and mystery about your your characters uh, is interesting to uh, to develop. Uh, consciousness. So choices, motivations, reactions, all these contribute to making uh, characters feel more alive. Um, but the, the, I would argue that the, the most important notion here is memory. So, um, you know, reactions is, is, a, is a great vector of intelligence for your characters, how they react to things that happen to, to them. But uh, I really believe that as soon as, um, as you make them remember, this is where you, uh, this is where you, you convey a sense of, of life with these characters and it's a little bit uncanny but it works really well in, in game design. Uh, critical choices. So here uh, dealing with life shifting events, um, really the choices that, that are going to, to define the, the, the characters, either critical choices that, that they make them, themselves or that you do for, for them as well. So. Uh, Everything around ending uh, relationships, moving away, putting distance from from uh, from one character to to the other, some sacrifices, punishments, 
uh, in XCOM, for example, uh, I think it was one of the DLCs, uh, characters could, could uh, wear an exoskeleton. Um, but to wear the, exo the exoskeleton, um, the characters had to cut, to cut both their legs. And uh, this is a pretty big sacrifice. If it was just, you know, around gameplay, there's, you know, it just cost a little bit of money to uh, to to install the the, the exoskeleton uh, on them, um, and that's okay. But here, because it's visually represented in the in the in the game, you know, it has emotional. Uh, it's it's emotional um, that that choices. And even then, if you add the fact that. Uh, for example, I used to have my, my sister in, uh, in, in the game, in, in XCOM. And uh, I was faced with just the fact that you know, she was in the game. She, she, I, I, I felt like she wanted to, to become, uh, to wear that exoskeleton, but I couldn't just tell her to, to go and cut both her legs because it's, it's my sister. I need to protect her. And this is, this is a simple, but, um, but uh, I feel deep emotional uh, reaction to, uh, to the game systems. Dialogues as well. Um, so you can interact with the, with the characters to, to influence them, um, but characters can also influence you, your opinion and your choices. Uh, in, f in Football Manager, for example, there is an interesting mechanic around uh, promises. So at some point, if, uh, if they are angry with, uh, with your decision or they're just a little bit disappointed, they will tell you. Uh, they, will, uh, they will tell you that they have something to, uh, uh, to tell you. And um, throughout the discussion, they will ask you, you know, when, when can I play? When can I actually make my, uh, my, my difference here? Uh, and you'll be given choices of, 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 uh, of dialogue options. And if you select one, then they will take it as a promise. And it's going to be integrated into into the game design where you know you have a timer for that for that promise and at the end of the time there at, at the end of the timer they hold you accountable uh, did you deliver on your promise or uh, did you not and after that there are some uh, consequences to to these things tragedy so tragedy is is a is a hard concept to introduce to uh, to, to game design because uh, it's often perceived as punishment as losing from the player perspective and as a source of, of frustration but again if you if you make it a part of of the player experience of the fact that there are many heroes they all have their own lives uh, you can choose from from uh, from that that pool of, of, of interesting characters to, to really shape your your gameplay um, this is this is what creates uh, meaning and tragedy is a big part of uh, um, of uh, classical storytelling, and it is uh, also about game design and about emergent narrative. So these are all supportive uh, game design patterns that you can use uh, in the in your in your game design uh, framework. Um, and uh, I'm sure there are many, many more actually that that you can add to this uh, to this list um, if you uh, if you think that you know you can create that emotional, uh, emotional connection with the characters. Um, so I just want to, um, to sum up a little bit uh, what, uh, what, I present to, to, what I presented to, to you through, uh, uh, through, um, through a framework that I'm, that I'm going to, to show you. So generated stories, the, the idea that um, systems and events are combining to, together to create something that players remember. Uh, the sense of identity, so uh, characters that live and that you that are different from one another, personality, how they perceive the world, uh, emotional connection, so the player must care, um, discrete agency, so the fact that the the, the, the player doesn't have complete control over the, the environment and as a, a witness to uh, whatever unfolds, um, uncertainty, so elements of chaos, randomness, uh, many heroes, a pool of characters to um, to tell stories about. Uh, progression, uh, the fact that characters are not static and they are leaving actually uh, something that is that is uh, worth um, telling about. Uh, legacy, so the fact that you that you remember that they're part of something bigger than just themselves. Uh, so that's for the primary patterns. The, the supporting patterns uh, dealing with with performance, how uh, success, failures, relationships, 
um, and uh, all the broken hearts that you can create through your, uh, through your game systems, uh, evolving identity that are really shaped throughout the, the, the gameplay, um, revealed identity, so hidden information and things are revealed, um, consciousness, the fact that uh, they are actually alive, uh, or I perceive them as alive and it makes me care about, about them, critical choices, the fact that you can make uh, choices for them or them uh, themselves about, about the world and uh, about the dilemmas that they might face. Um, dialogue, uh, either just going to, going to the characters uh, yourself or for them to, to talk to you uh, or for them to talk between, uh, between each other as well. And finally, tragedy. Um, thank you very much. That was the end of this, of this talk. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, just, just before we, we go into, uh, into questions, uh, I just want to note that uh, I, actually I didn't present my, myself. Uh, one, one slide was, uh, was, was skipped in the, in the presentation, but um, yeah, I'm a part of, uh, of a game design studio that is called uh, Darewise uh, Entertainment. It's, it's based in, in Paris and we are hiring across uh, all disciplines. So, uh, so yeah, it's a new AAA studio based in, based in Paris, France, and we're working on a persistent open world. So uh, if you're interested, just um, check out the website. All right. <clears throat> Do you have questions? Okay. All right, then. Thank you very, Thank very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Remy Boisherot.